If undeterred, the invasion by buffelgrass and other flammable non-native species is certainly going to lead to the unhinging of a unique American ecosystem. I guess it's sort of like a science fiction horror film coming true. We could have the city in jeopardy with buffalo grass unless we do something about it. I have never seen anything that comes close to this in terms of a threat to the quality of life that we have. Buffalo grass threatens to really be the biggest issue that we have. We're beyond the discussion point. We're beyond the debate point. We're into the action point now. Buffalo grass evolved in response to drought and heavy grazing in the African savanna and is rapidly invading other subtropical areas of the world. Beginning in the 1930s, this flammable grass was introduced into Texas, Arizona, and Sonora, Mexico to feed cattle and control erosion. Wherever it is planted, buffalo grass eventually escapes along roadsides and into both natural and urban areas. This invasive grass easily outcompetes native shrubs and cacti for space, nutrients, and water, replacing them in just a few years. The grass also poses an immense fire danger, the likes of which the Sonoran Desert has never seen, and the invasion is just getting started. These are species that have been introduced from other continents, and in their introduction, they've basically escaped their enemies. And when that happens, you tend to grow exponentially. It doubles every year which is a realization that, that is hard to comprehend unless you see what a picture of what it looked like last year and then can take a look at the, at the same spot this year. I want to give you the penny example. So you start out with a penny and every day you actually double that penny. By the end of a month, you're actually a millionaire. You're a millionaire several times over. And that is what's happening with buffalo grass. If we don't do something now, then everything that we've worked for over the past 10 years, over the past 50 years for, for many people, um, dealing with issues of habitat protection and biodiversity really will be gone practically overnight. I believe that the spread of buffalo grass is a real threat to the Sonoran Desert landscape and ecosystem, things that make Southern Arizona so special. And in Southern Arizona, the community and the economy depend on the environment. I submit it's not climate that brings people here, it's, um, it's the desert. We live in one of the most beautiful places on earth. Tourism contributes roughly $2 billion in, in revenues to our local economy, um, generates about 40,000 jobs in hospitality alone. And, and our positioning for the resort, and, and, and I would think the positioning of all the resorts in Southern Arizona, is based centrally on the environment being the backdrop. The fact that buffalo grass is now in some cases, a scar on our mountainsides or on our roadways uh, is certainly going to make an impact on how you view your property or how you potentially view something you might buy. Unless something is done about this grass, these will be the very last saguaros that we'll ever, ever see on Tumamac Hill or in the Catalina foothills or the Tucson mountains. Saguaro National Park was set aside in 1933 to protect the giant saguaro cactus. This would become a buffalo grass national park instead of a saguaro national park. The saguaro is the symbol of our community. It's not the symbol of any other community. It's southern Arizona. The saguaros in particular, they're iconic in, in what they communicate about the environment. Uh, their shape is majestic and, and really sets us apart as a unique destination uh, within the tourism market. Once the desert burns, it's, it's actually not going to recover. If it's in buffalo grass, what's going to come back again is actually buffalo grass. Even without fire, those are the last saguaros on the landscape. With fire, that conversion will happen overnight. That's because when buffalo grass burns, it burns hot and fast, with flames up to 20 feet high, consuming an area the size of a football field in as little as three minutes. The, the temperatures that the, this grass burns at are relatively amazing. So the rest of the grasses, the rest of the plants, typically burn at six to eight hundred degrees, where this is going to be burning 1,300 to 1,400 degrees. What's worse, the saguaro cactus and other desert plants have no defense against fire. Until now, they haven't needed it. The Arizona upland portion of the Sonoran Desert is fireproof because of all the bare ground. It's characterized by these wide open spaces of bare ground where you have no fine fuels to carry a fire. Unfortunately, if you look across this landscape, 
all it would take is one carelessly thrown cigarette butt and we would have a few hundred acres going up in flames. When you make the desert really, really flammable, what ends up happening is that you get fires that start in the buffalo grass at the bottom of the mountain that then actually go with a convection upslope and you start linking uh, fire at the bottom of the mountain with fire at the top where we have our forests. This linking of, of the fuel is going to have serious, serious impacts. Fire has become, in the city, has become a, a, a real threat and a, and a real issue to us. The big problem is because of how fast it burns and where it burns and especially on slopes, in theory we're going to have, we're going to have problems protecting houses. Yeah, this is a very high value neighborhood. I mean, all the houses are uh, probably close to a million dollars. All the houses, for the most part, are surrounded by buffalo grass. It's going to be grab your cat and run for your life. Are we going to need wildland firefighters in an urban setting? And I think that's a potential that we're looking at that coming very soon. More frequent and destructive fires spell doom for Tucson's environmentally dependent economy. The resort is set within the Tucson Mountain Park and it's this magnificent environment and magnificent location. And in the event of a fire, um, I think um, our business will be unrecoverable. People have to be aware in this neighborhood that things have changed, that this isn't the Sonoran Desert anymore. They've moved to California. Home sales in Florida dipped significantly after the hurricanes. Um, the, with the wildfires in California, that's uh, making a real impact on the real estate market in those areas. And if we become known as the fire capital of the Mountain West, then uh, certainly that's going to pose a real threat to our economy and our quality of life. But buffalo grass doesn't have to win the fight. With enough resources and total commitment from the entire community, the spread of buffalo grass can be controlled. It's actually a fairly simple process to control the grass. Um, it can be done either herbicidally or manually. It's very effective. You can get 90 to 100 percent kill rate. They both require a lot of follow-up. And so that means coming back to this site year after year until we get the grass taken care of. The reason that it's important for us, if we're gonna, if we're gonna actually go after buffalo grass, to start big by spending literally millions of dollars to try to control it in southern Arizona, is that if it's doubling every year and we start small, basically we're not even keeping up um, with, with the spread of buffalo grass. For us to really do something about this, it's going to take money. We need to set aside those resources uh, in scarce resource times. Uh, no matter what it takes, uh, we need to be as creative and innovative as possible in finding these solutions. I don't know of another environmental issue that has brought this diverse of a group together with a focus of immediate action. This will be something that the business community, environmentalists, recreationalists, Everybody will understand the relevance to their own goals and mission. Whatever we do to tackle this problem, we must emphasize collaboration. We need to collaborate between agencies and between different levels of government. Do we, as a community, have the will to solve this problem, to, to address an issue before it becomes a crisis that has gone beyond the, the ability to address it? It's a matter of priority. And it's a matter of public will. The public has got to send a signal to, to its elected officials. This is more important than that. If the public says, boy, we want something done about it, the money will show up. It is not an isolated problem that can be treated in an isolated way. And the recipe for failure is just waiting too long. There's no time to waste. Procrastination is not an option at this point. If we don't do something, Eventually, we're all going to look out and say, what happened? How did this happen? Why didn't we do something about it? Here we are in 2020, we've lost our desert. How did that happen? And that's the thing I think that we're sitting here saying, we aren't going to let that happen.